Ha. Welcome everybody. I'm Karen Taylor from the Color Vowel Chart and Head of Education at Blue Canoe. This is our weekly Thursday, Friday gathering of teachers and learners. Uh, every week teachers get together and once a month we invite learners to join us and users of Blue Canoe so that we can explore and have fun as one big group. We have opened up the chat for questions. You can take a look over there. Um, if you have a question, please post it because our teachers in the room, can you just wave your hands a little bit if you're a teacher? Yeah, are eager. In fact, they're so eager that they can post questions and answer each other's questions. And uh, meanwhile, if you are a learner or a Blue Canoe user, can you go ahead and raise your hands? Great to have you here. Um, this is a place where we can answer questions about the app, about language, and anything between the two, okay? Um, so please raise those questions. I also have Penny Williams in the room. Hi, Penny. Yeah, Penny is the guru behind, she's the leader behind all your emails, all your communication. Anytime you have a difficulty with the app, she's there to help you fix it. So we want to give um, props to Penny, okay? Um, and then also I'd like to welcome and acknowledge Dr. Robin Barr. Uh, she is our lead, ph lead phonologist, our lead linguist. And so she uh, likes to answer those deeper questions as well, okay? So everything belongs here today. Uh, today's theme, it's nice to have Svetlana. I see you're calling in from Russia. Uh, that's wonderful. And I'm looking through the chat, so having fun. Today's theme is, what color do you hear? And I just always love saying that question uh, because it's strange, right? What color do you hear? Um, what we've done with the color vowel chart is start to change the way we experience language. Rather than thinking of a word as a bunch of letters that have sounds, we think of it as a sound <laughs> event that has a feeling that comes from a, a vowel in the center of the stress, and that's the color. So I'm going to show you a little bit of what, uh, what color do you hear looks like. Um, and again, I'm going to encourage questions that we'll collect and address as we go through our time together today. Um, here is a Facebook page called What Color Do You Hear? So it's actually a campaign that we have in Facebook and in Instagram. Uh, how many of you use any form of um, if I ask here, how many of you use Facebook? Raise the hands. Okay. So if you're in Facebook, I'm going to go ahead and put that in the chat. We have a nice um, link for that up here. There we go. In the chat. You can open it up right now. We get everyone here. Okay. You can go ahead and open that in another window because this is something you can participate in right now. You'll recall that a couple of weeks ago, uh, we actually looked at color vowel crosswords, but today is a little different. Uh, we're going to be able to look at photographs, beautiful and, and intriguing photographs that our users and our visitors post. Anybody can post a photo. And then we ask the question, uh, what color is it? You know, what color do you hear? And of course it's not, just yellow visually, we also have all kinds of words here. So to give some examples, we've got the quick answer. <laughs> uh, so we have color, vowel, olive, sock, squash. And if you're new to the chart, anybody new to the chart today? Anybody new? Okay, a little bit, Jonah? Great. So we can look around on the chart and remind ourselves that we have colors that will match a word. So the word squash in this case, squa, a, a, squash, rhymes or has the same vowel as olive and sock. So everybody Except just try me. that. <laughs> oh yeah, do you use Auburn, Robin? Auburn, that's right there in the Facebook, Auburn dog squash for me. <laughs> there you are, <laughs> wonderful. So we can all, we can see how these are neighbors on the chart behind me. In fact, if I stop share for just a moment, um, I say olive, sock, squash. Who else uses olive, sock? Raise your hands. No? And then how many of you say Auburn dog squash? Raise your hands. See, so there's some accent variation. They're both correct and they're neighbors. And that's because in the mouth, they're also neighbors. Ah, aw, right? So they're very similar placement. And there's no important distinction that you need to know about if you're a, a learner of English. Both of them work. 
okay? So as long as you have a nice low jaw and your tongue is a little further back, ah, you'll be fine, okay? So everyone just try one version. I'll do olive sock, let's try that. Olive sock squash, olive sock squash, or Auburn dog squash. Auburn dog squash. Nicely done, Dr. Barr. Wonderful. Um, continuing, what this allows us to do is first of all, bring together what we love. I think we all love photographs, really beautiful images or intriguing images. Um, so as we come down, this is a place where everybody, as, as I mentioned earlier, can post a photo. Um, Skip, who's, is Skip in the room today? Maybe not. Oh, there you are, Skip. I knew you were there. Uh, so Skip recently posted this gorgeous picture of a loon. Uh, so, you know, blue moon loon is the obvious uh, sort of answer. But if you don't know what a loon is, then you think, huh, I now know a new word <laughs> for a duck of some kind that looks uh, like it has a red eye. <laughs> so that's the, 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 the loon right there. Um, what else do we have as we come down? Um, so essentially we can start to say, well, what more do we hear? So let's go ahead and brainstorm for a minute. If we know this is a blue moon spoon, what else might we add? And let's use the chat for that as well as speaking out. What else could we say about this picture? You can open up microphones. There, there are not so many of us. And I'm looking over here in the chat. There we go. All right. Loon strainer silver metal okay good so let's watch those as as we go along let's go ahead and add them down below um somebody said is that by any chance blue moon aluminum that was kind of neat um silver pen aluminium if you were british we can add ours and the way we add it is if you want to participate in this we use a special hashtag protocol and the hashtag looks like this uh color vowel that's the first part then you add the color vowel phrase so it might be gray day then you have a space and your word strainer okay and so that's the way that we mark up color vowel images um, when you post you can put your hashtag here um, if they're separate though they're not going to come up the way you want let me show you what happens here Notice color Val blue moon cucumbers. If I click on this, what's beautiful about that is now we will see all of the blue moon posts and images. Okay. And so what color do you hear here? Any guesses? We know it's blue moon because this is all of this is color Val blue moon, as you can see here. Color Val blue moon. Shall I reveal? Cucumber plant. <laughs> okay, you have to get really close to know that one. Um, what else comes up? Uh, this one, what can we say is blue moon about this picture? Beautiful, mm-hmm. Let's take a look. We have beautiful, we have youper. Um, I don't think I know what a youper is. I bet they talked about it in the comments. Youper, uh-huh. So this is something to do with Michigan, Upper Peninsula, there we go, being from that part. So, you know, we learn more vocabulary and we, I mean, I didn't know that word before it was posted. And so we learned a little bit of local uh, language. Oh, here's a favorite, here's um, Dr. Barr right here, nice to see you. We have Color Val Blue Moon music or music, yeah, music for oboist. We can jump over to Rose Boat Okay. Um, we used to have a version of the chart, our earlier versions were all rose coat. So don't be surprised when you see that um, and you'll find them under both listings. Um, but here we've got, um, this is I don't know from the, a color Val rose coat, I don't know because this sign was so strange. No parking until 7 p.m. What does it mean? We don't know. Okay. So what we can do when we're, when we're using uh, Facebook is you can use this as a posting strategy for yourself, whether it's you as a teacher or you as a learner, 
we've had so much fun in this group and it's already up to uh, several hundred people. Um, our second place where you can participate in what color do you hear is in Instagram. And I find this particularly beautiful. If you are somebody like me who loves images, um, you can start to use it as kind of a vocabulary card stack. So if I tell you that everything here is a uh, gray day, uh, we can use these almost like vocabulary flashcards and say, well, what's this guy going to be right here? Any guesses about our first picture down in the lower right corner? Okay, we've got the plane in the middle, rainbow. Yeah, anything over here? What do we think is happening in this picture? Let's check our rainbow. Sure enough, there's our rainbow. Okay, um, here we've got our plane, happens to be in New Mexico. Over here, table. Anything else? Let's take a look. Ah, it was playing. They're playing a game. Mm -hmm. So there we can say, oh, sure, that's, that's right. And then if we come up, uh, we have a nice example of a cake, right? Yep, so it's just kind of a fun way. It's a little bit like those crosswords. We can start to guess what's the word that's being prompted here if we know that it's gray. Uh, this middle one might be challenging right here. Any guesses about that? This one is not hay, actually, although that's a valid word. Uh, it's paintbrush, uh, which is a kind of uh, flower. Okay. In the middle, yeah, it's a daisy. Exactly. It's a daisy. Okay. Um, so it's just, this is what we wanted to let you know about and see if you might be interested in participating. It's as simple as using those hashtags. So it would be uh, what color do you hear is the main campaign. We have hundreds of posts put up and then from there each one might be tagged in multiple ways, right? And again, you can see our color valve white tie lilac, color valve blue moon blooming, and each one of these you click on and it brings up another set of photos, right? So all of these being blue moon. So it's sort of an endless vocabulary hunt uh, to see if you have the same vocabulary as the people who post. And then if you feel more like you want to share your beautiful images, you can simply post them and let others respond, right? So we have um, something like this and other people can respond um, both with color vowels and just with the quality of loving a photo, okay? Wonderful. So that's just a highlight of what we're doing with what color can you hear. I'm going to open up the, the, the table now or the, the airwaves to questions and to comments, either about this particular campaign or about uh, Color Val or Blue Canoe. And I'll start just by asking, are any teachers using the What Color Do You Hear campaign with their students yet? Not yet? So certainly something you can you can bring up and you know we're out there taking pictures even if we're in um, pandemic mode we're still out there with our phones taking good pictures okay uh, so it's there for you and it's open to all the Facebook page you need to add yourself and you know request membership and we we approve it and then for Instagram it's just a matter of using those hashtags and then it comes up okay wonderful. So I'm open for any kinds of um, stress questions. You know, this week I've received a lot of questions um, from both, gosh, I've, let me think about some of my better questions. And Jennifer, if you think of them too, you're welcome to raise them or Penny. Uh, I'd, I'd be happy to um, summarize some of those. But lately, <laughs> lately we've been working with a lot of our um, North American speakers of English who've raised the question about black cat in a word like, um, everybody say fancy, fancy. And I, there are some speakers of English who think, I'm not hearing black exactly. So, so go ahead and try black cat fancy, black cat fancy. And raise your hand if you feel like it's not exactly a black word. Anybody feeling like that? Regina, Jonah, Jonah, your native speaker of English? Yeah, where are you from? You can. You're right here. <laughs> DC. 
You're from DC. Maryland. Maryland, oh, you know DC. I'm in DC. All right. Uh, Regina, where are you from? South Carolina. Okay. So, you know, sometimes there, there's sort of an Atlantic kind of uh, feel to this. Uh, but I just want our users and our students to know that even among native speakers of English, we can have these different opinions about the color of a word. Um, but it's not threatening and it's not um, confusing because we all understand each other as long as the colors touch, typically. So if I say uh, caught and you say caught, or if somebody says fancy and I say fancy, uh, we still understand each other. Okay? Yeah. Questions that come up. This is really a session for, for folks to, to ask. Let's see, we have a question about what to underline. Um, in, the word, <laughs> in the word kernel, what a great question. Who can spell the word kernel? Who can put that in the chat for us? Because I think I need some assistance. <laughs> I'm gonna get a pen here. The word kernel, like a kernel in the army or a kernel of corn, which would be spelled a little differently, right? Okay, there we go. So if we take out our color valid dictionary, we have a perfect um, answer for ourselves. And I actually could grab that and show that to folks here. One second here. Thank you. There we go. Um, how many of you have been using our dictionary? If you pull it up. We can take a look at this. Um, here's an example where things can seem kind of ambiguous. Um, take a look at kernel, kernel. And we know that it's purple shirt. Try purple shirt, kernel, yeah? And what we've done in the dictionary is we've simply underlined the stressed vowel letter. And so that uh, takes care of what color we need to use. And then what else is happening in this word? We have some silent letters, right? And in this case, we could think of it as the silent letters as being both the L and the O after it. So we underline just the, the stressed vowel letter um, or letters that are next to each other. Okay, great. Thanks for asking that question, Jennifer, and sharing that screenshot. Karen, so Robin, you wanna share a little bit about that? Well, uh, yeah, Colonel. Yeah, why the heck is it pronounced Colonel? Well, it was always pronounced Colonel. It comes from French Coronel. And then, uh, and it was originally spelled with an R, but then we started to use a different spelling, uh, Colonel, because that was um, more popular in French and in Spanish, but we kept the pronunciation as Colonel. So isn't it, I think it's really interesting that the, the consonant switch in there is R and L. Oh, that's very are, common. Yeah, metathesis right? of R and L happens a lot. Yeah. Like miracle, milagro, same kind of thing happening there. I think, I think our Japanese speakers find that interesting too, right? Just that, that you're not alone in a sense, that the RL relationship is happening in all kinds of ways, right, in, in different instances. Wonderful. Karen, Jonah had a question. Sure. Hi, Jonah. So I put it in the um, comments as well. So if we have a variation if students are sort of disagreeing on if it's black cat, if it's this, if it's this color, do you think it would be easiest to default just on the whatever dictionary, uh, a dictionary phonetic spelling? Well, you could. Um, I think the 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 problem in going to a dictionary is that you're going to find one answer usually, or maybe two. What I like to do is take it right back to the people by going to Youglish. So I'm going to show you, uh, if you're really having that kind of a dialogue, like, well, which one's right? Um, I like to point out that there are lots of right ways to speak. So if we take a word, um, you know, I'll just take a word like uh, ant, you know, what's the right way to say ant? And Youglish collects videos from YouTube by their transcripts. And so you're gonna use this toggle right here to forward through each instance of the word that you're looking for. And it can be a word or it can be a phrase, just so you know. So the search item is here. You can choose all or just uh, US or just UK or just Australian samples. And then you can kind of settle it by, by actually listening. And I like that process because 
uh, first of all, it's just much more engaging and interesting. Um, but also it really illustrates the kind of variety that we all can engage with. We, we don't misunderstand each other. We actually tolerate a lot of accent variation. Um, so then we listen. And then, and also to her aunt, her aunt. Her aunt, so she uses black cat aunt. And then I can forward to the next instance. I, you know, I just I lost my aunt, I lost my uncle. Okay, he uses what color? Black cat also. We could start a tally and start to see, hmm, what's the next one? Each with Unroda and Crystal. Um, and that one was almost kind of in the middle for me. It didn't quite sound so black. Come on. Texas. Uh, these are children of Aunt Wee, who's sort of a, a very important. Okay, another black. Now, if I if I go just to the UK, we might start to hear a bit more of, you know, that variation. So this is just one example, uh, with one word. But uh, Euglish is a wonderful resource. Had you ever heard of that, Jonah? Yeah, give it a try. It's. I mean, it depends on the amount of time you have to answer a question. But if they're really starting, if I mean, in international classrooms, you know, students can start to say, well, I'm the correct one and well, I know better. And if you really want to go that direction, this is, this is the data that they need to hear. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. What about if you say, like I say aunt, I don't even, I don't go anywhere near black cat. I say aunt. Right. I, actually, I was waiting for the aunt example to come up. So maybe Skip, I need where to are you from? Where are you from, Skip? Where, where am I from? Where uh, uh, my parents uh, both they came from Southern Ohio, Kentucky, but I'm huh. in DC my whole life. I yeah. don't know where you got the aunt. Yeah, I have, I'll have to uh, quiz you further. <laughs> so there's your aunt. <laughs> but yeah, that's the idea. Is actually you'll hear aunt and aunt, and for some reason, um, if anyone wants to think of a better, a good example with some variation. Um, but you'll you'll find some lovely examples, and you can just keep going. As you can see here, there are 209 samples with the word a u n t in it. So you'll hear you'll hear not just aunt and aunt, but aunt or some others. Okay. Um, that said, Euglish collects mostly from TED Talks, so it's not going to have the whole spectrum of accent and variation that you'd find in um, you know out in society, depending on where you go it will be kind of the, the curated for TED Talks kinds of accents that you'll hear there. Okay, yeah, good. Other questions that have come up? I haven't been able to read the whole chat, so feel free to pitch in with the, with the questions or the observations. So Karen, Jonah did ask about where the CV dictionary is, so if you wanted to mention for those who... Sure. So in Blue Canoe, the Colorval Dictionary is, a, is one of our tools that comes with the premium version or the full educator's version. And if you don't already know everybody, we currently have, if you've never tried it, teachers can get Blue Canoe uh, for free for their students through the fall if you're new to Blue Canoe. And if you've already done that for a semester last in the spring, you can certainly tell your colleagues about that. Um, so there's just a really nice option waiting. If you're a student, you have a couple of ways of accessing that dictionary. And one is by upgrading to, uh, to premium, which would be the full version. Uh, so that picture I showed you a little bit earlier was an example of, I'll sort of pull up another one here, of, um, of the dictionary. And so what we do in it, is we provide a markup with the line and we provide the color vowel and you can listen to both this, the stressed vowel and to the whole word, okay? Um, Penny, would we be able to tell folks that we're coming up with our little fun tool? Can we tell them about that? Uh, not yet. Not yet. We have another tool yeah, coming sure. up. We need Stay to make tuned. sure it's great before we broadly do that. Yeah, it's pretty exciting though. So you'll be seeing a, another a dictionary related tool that will come out pretty soon that we've been testing. And, and so you'll be able to access this um, in other places. That's about as much as I'm allowed to Very say. Very soon. Or else they'll have to uh, put a muzzle over me. It's <laughs> <Very laughs> still in, in development, okay. So still, um, those that have a question or was that an applause? 
was that your hand, Del Delnoza? Were you raising your hand? No, I just up uploaded some. I said, applause. Oh. <laughs> Wonderful. Good. So tell me, I, I think I'd love to know, since we just have the last few minutes here, um, is it safe to assume that everyone here is teaching online these days? At least to some extent, yeah? Um, please know that every Friday afternoon, we get together for Friday at five to share and, and highlight tech tools that we use for effective online teaching. Um, tomorrow's session is with Megan Calvert. She'll be speaking on effective speaking activities and sp online speaking activities. Uh, so that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, each week we highlight something. It might be Zoom, it might be uh, Flipgrid, which is one of my favorite tools, um, or any of the Google tools. So uh, it changes every week, and you can view those over in um, colorval.com if you go to our events. You can view all of our upcoming events and sign up for that free event as well. Uh, we know it's not easy to teach online, especially if you're new to it. And just keeping things engaging is, is always, you know, um, hard to keep on the front of that learning curve. So come and get some ideas with us. Okay. What kinds of tools are you all using? Can I just do a little, a little check-in with you so I can hear and see if I'm aware of all those tools? What's your favorite tool? Jamboard from Liz Bigler. All right, Jamboard. I, We're playing I know each other's sandboxes yes. right now. <laughs> so Jamboard is a Google, it's a, a Google suite tool. Um, if you want to call it Google. Good. Quizlet, Kahoot. Mm-hmm. Anything else? I'm a Flipgrid girl. By the way, I use that a lot in the courses we have going on um, with ColorVal if you want to be studying uh, teachers, if you want to be studying more about how to use ColorVal deeply. Uh, we use that extensively. Lyricstraining.com. Is that now? Is that, tell us about that. Is that like a, a karaoke? Oh, you don't have a mic. There we go. Uh, okay, it's like typing karaoke. Interesting. Okay, we'll be checking that out. I'm copying and pasting that somewhere. Fabulous. Yeah, if you, there's something you would like us to highlight um, at a future Friday at five, I'd be happy to do that. Um, and then the other thing that I just want you to know is Penny and I are always available. Um, the whole team is through feedback at bluecanoelearning.com. Let me put that there in the chat, so feedback at Blue, Blue Canoe Learning. Because if you, I know sometimes it's hard to think, what are those questions I had? But whenever you have a question, you can send it off to us and we'll collect them. And we, we're happy to answer those at any of our Thursday events, Thursday, Friday events, okay? Wonderful. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us. Please uh, follow up and check out our What Color Do You Hear? campaigns. They're available to the public. They are a lot of fun. Uh, they're especially helpful if you just like to engage and combine, you know, your visual life with your vocabulary life and pronunciation. Um, you're certainly welcome to post a photo on your own Instagram account or on our Facebook page at hashtag what color do you hear. Okay. Um, I hope you've been enjoying yourself with Blue Canoe. Please raise those questions and we'll see you again soon. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Karen. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Bye, Penny. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Thank